Good morning guys, welcome back to the vlog. It is a Sunday morning, we are about to make some breakfast. Well actually, Nick is in the middle of making lunches, so he's gonna make like a big batch of like stew for the week. I'm gonna get on to making some coffee and some breakfast. I thought in this video maybe it'd be fun to like do a few little like tips and health hacks. Oh, the other thing that's really exciting. So I have been making broccoli sprouts and hopefully I can actually put some of these on my breakfast this morning. And they have been going for about four or five days now and they look amazing. That's so cool. I actually picked up the camera earlier this week when I started making them so I might insert that footage now. Hey guys, hair is probably looking a bit crazy today. So I am doing something a bit different. I'm going to be doing some sprouting. So I have got some organic broccoli seeds and then I've also got this really cool little sprouting jar. You can buy these like anywhere. You get them at health food stores, or mostly at health food stores. I bought mine online, but essentially it's just a jar with like this fancy little lid that has holes in it so it can drain upside down. There's also ones that like have the little holder so that it can hold it upside down. This one didn't come with that so that's something to look out for as well. But I am going to be testing out growing our own broccoli sprouts. So broccoli sprouts are really high in sulforaphane which is super good for you. It's a potent antioxidant and it's good for your liver. It's also a really nice way to like boost the nutrient density. You can just get a handful of broccoli sprouts and throw them into a salad. You can throw it onto breakfast, onto dinner really as well if you wanted to. But honestly they just make a really nice little addition to a meal and a way to kind of boost up the nutrition. I am gonna pop these. We've just got our organic broccoli sprouts that I bought online. And I'm gonna add two tablespoons into this jar. I'm not a pro at this, so let's all collectively cross our fingers for this experiment. Although I'm pretty confident it'll turn out fine. Let's do it. So we've got our jar and I'm just going to add in two tablespoons of the seeds. And then I'm just going to completely cover that with some filtered water. And my water filter is running out of water! This is the only problem with doing this whole system. I think I need to do a refill. BRB. So I have added a fair bit of water just to cover those completely. I'm gonna put on this little lid. I'm going to just keep these somewhere away from sunlight. For broccoli sprouts, you wanna leave them for about six to eight hours. So I'm gonna come back to this a little bit later tonight. I'm gonna take off the water and then it's just a process of rinsing them out for a few days, turning the thing upside down, but I'll film the whole process for you guys so you can follow along with the broccoli sprout journey. For now, I'm just gonna see if I can find somewhere that's a little bit like dark, dank. They love that kind of environment. The only problem is that we are currently in winter, so we'll just have to see how they fare because this sort of stuff generally does better in like the warmer months of the year, but we're gonna give it a go. Okay, broccoli sprouts, where would you like to live? You could live in that corner over there or we could live in the laundry space over there. I don't know, there's something that seems a bit gross about living in the laundry. I'm gonna put you right here. It's like slightly more dark. Okay, so it has been eight hours and I've just removed all the water and then just given these another rinse and put it upside down in this bowl so it can just drain and then I'm just gonna leave it here. Oop. And then I just have to rinse these seeds out three times a day for the next few days and we should have some broccoli sprouts. So this is about four to five days later, so they have all sprouted. And I think I'm going to take them out of this jar because they're getting very overcrowded. That is so awesome. Tip number one is to add some form of broccoli sprouts to your diet. So you can buy these at the shops and at the markets, but I think this has been really fun making them at home. Essentially, broccoli sprouts are a really good source of sulforaphane, which is actually higher than any other cruciferous vegetables. So it's a sulfur containing compound and essentially sulforaphane helps to increase antioxidant production in the body also helps with detox and liver health and all of that good stuff okay so I've just transferred our sprouts into this little colander I'm gonna give them a rinse down and then pat them dry before I put them into the fridge so I don't want them to go into the fridge like damp because they'll get all soggy and gross So I'm just trying to get out any extra moisture. So I've just laid out like a clean tea towel and I'm just gonna put them over here and kind of pat them dry a bit. You could obviously do this with like a paper towel, but I'm not about that wasteful life. 
Okay, so I am just in the middle of whipping up some breakfast and I thought I would come in with tip number two and that is to cook your tomatoes. So when you cook tomatoes, it actually increases the bioavailability of lycopene and it's really good for men's health, specifically, as my mum used to say. It's good for your balls. Hey Nicholas. It's a really easy hack that you can do, especially if you're making like breakfast. I always try it's to nice cook up to some tomatoes. Okay, next tip, and by the way, you don't have to like knock all of these off in breakfast. I'm just thinking of little things, but the other thing. Eat fermented foods. Yeah, so we have a garlic sauerkraut. You wanna buy them like from the fridge section. You could obviously make sauerkraut yourself as well, but this is like an easy way just to have it on hand. So I'm just gonna do a forkful with my breakfast. And this breakfast is especially extra because it's a Sunday. But even if you could just do like one or two of these things, like first thing in the morning, I feel like you've kind of gotten off to a good start. So even if you just like cook tomatoes, or if you have sprouts, you can just add that to a meal. Or you have sauerkraut, and you can just slather that on, you know, breakfast or lunch. Delicious. So obviously fermented foods are really good for supporting your gut microbiome on like a daily basis. So introducing some kind of fermented food every day is really good for your gut health. So whether that's sauerkraut or kefir or even like yogurt, kimchi, Billy's just outside. But yeah, doing that on kind of a semi-daily basis is pretty good for your gut health. So I'm gonna add this to breakfast and we're gonna have like the most epic breakfast ever. Also, you don't have to do like a huge amount. Nick likes to do like heaps, but I just do like a little forkful on the side. And by the way, we also have some free range bacon as well today. Hi guys, welcome back to the vlog. So we have fast forwarded through the week and it is now Thursday afternoon. So I don't know, maybe like 3.30 or 4 p.m. at the moment. I'm really not sure, but I've actually just gotten back from a trip to Ikea. Ended up doing like a quick trip in to pick up a few things. Ikea is like, it's not that far away, but it's a decent little trip. I don't go there that often. It's like I compile different things that I need over a period of time and then go and pick them all up at once. So there are a few things that we were kind of just needing at the moment. We needed like a new washing, like boring things. Like we needed a new, what do you call that? Laundry? Laundry basket, but there's another word for it. But essentially, hamper, that's the word that I'm thinking. So because of Billy, we had like these really cool Ikea baskets before that we were putting our washing in, but Billy would take things and like underwear primarily and socks and she would spread them all across the house. That's like her favorite thing to do is to steal underwear. So we decided to get like a laundry basket that has a lid. So I've literally just walked in the door and Nick's been kind of putting a few things together. So we have this, new laundry hamper style thing. So it's got this nice little lid, it's filled it with stuff. So I'm gonna put that upstairs. And then a few other little things that I'll show you. So this is like a mini random little Ikea haul. I don't love shopping for, I don't know. I always feel like a little bit guilty shopping at Ikea because obviously it's not like a super sustainable thing to do. I don't know. I don't know if it's like true or if it's green washing. They are doing a lot of like new bamboo products. There's certain lines of products that are good, but I think the other big problem with Ikea just generally is that you end up picking up a lot of stuff that you don't need. You know, you, you walk in with like one thing in mind that you need and you walk out with 20 things. So I really have to like try and control myself in there because there's always so many cute little things that you want to buy. And it was packed at Ikea today. It's like school holidays. I would have thought there would be more social distancing like procedures going on, but it there was nothing in there at all. People all crammed in together, no social distancing. But anyway, I'll get onto like this mini little Ikea haul. Nothing that crazy or interesting, but I don't know. I always find these sorts of things interesting. So. Number one, we have our new laundry hamper that is gonna go in our wardrobe space. Number two, we have this little side table that I'm going to unpack and I'll show you in a sec. It's like a rattan 
um, like cane little table so I thought that was really cute and it's a really cute thing as well if we move and it doesn't suit the next place because even moving from like our last place to here I feel like certain things don't make sense anymore yeah the fact that this is like cane I think is really nice even if it isn't used as a side table in future it can be like a little plant stand it could kind of just be repurposed and still look cute Billy don't need the cardboard so this is the little table that we got so it's like a little like cane vibe just good for like putting like a coffee or something on like while you're sitting the couch because anything that you put on the floor she loves to drink it out of your cup she's drank out of my coffee cup before yeah it should help with that second last thing i got nick this coffee plunger thing so they do a double walled french press which is really nice because you can make coffee in it and it'll still be hot like you know an hour hour and a half later and then lastly so this is the final thing that i bought and this was kind of like the impulse buy i did not go in with an intention to buy this. This is a little sheepskin pillow. Because it's getting a little bit colder at the moment, we don't really have a bed for Billy downstairs. Oh, you're gonna check it out? So I thought this would be really nice and cozy and snuggly. They had other kinds of blankets, but I thought sheepskin is really nice because it's like obviously a more natural option than like synthetic fibers. I mean, it depends really what side of the fence you're on because vegans obviously don't like the thought of using sheepskin, but I think it's a little bit nicer to use something that's natural, even if it is from an animal compared to using something that's made out of plastics and synthetic fibers. So yeah, super happy with that. She's just really into biting it at the moment. That's your thing. Don't you want to just sleep on it? No, you want to try and rip it out. So I'm probably actually going to give this a wash before I leave it down here. Just put it through a wool cycle in the washing machine. I never thought that I'd be someone that bought sheepskin just because I don't always love the look of sheepskin, but it just felt so cuddly and I thought she'd really like it. So Okay guys, so it is a little bit later and I'm just about I'm just about to make some dinner. Billy, have you stolen a piece of cardboard? Yes. So I thought I would jump on and kind of keeping in the theme of this vlog, so some little health hacks. The next tip is to keep up variety with the fruits and vegetables that you're buying, especially looking for like particularly dark colored vegetables and like different colors. Tonight, this is super exciting, we went to the markets on the weekend and we picked up a purple cauliflower. The markets are generally the best place to go if you wanna be eating like more variety in your diet. I find that when we shop at like Coles or Woolies, we're just buying the same things every week. It's like broccolini, zucchini, just like the standard vegetables. But when you go to the market, there is just so many more options and they're not necessarily always more expensive. So this purple cauliflower wasn't really any more expensive than a regular white cauliflower and it's just something a bit different and every time that you buy something that's like purples especially tend to be more rich in antioxidants so purple cauliflower purple sweet potato add in some purple where you can but aside from just like purple colored things like really deep dark colored fruits and vegetables i'm gonna go ahead and make our dinner i didn't even say what we're making tonight so i'm gonna be baking up some cauliflower i've got some tiny little sweet potatoes and some salmon. Salmon night, fish night, which is always a good night. Okay, so our veggies are in the oven and I'm just about to get started with chopping up our garlic that I'm going to use in our fish. But this is kind of like the next little health tip. So if you're using garlic in a meal, make sure that you chop it up and leave it out for about 10 minutes, which is a really easy thing to do, especially when we're doing like our vegetables. So it's easy enough for me to just chop this up and leave it out until I need to cook off the fish a bit later. And the reason for that is that when you chop up and increase the surface area on garlic, it actually increases is the concentration of allicin which is another sulfur compound found in garlic that has antioxidant properties and it's also a natural antimicrobial it's debatable how much survives through the cooking process so it's especially good if you're going to be eating garlic raw like if you were putting it into a guacamole or something like that that you're gonna be eating garlic raw rather than cooking it which could kind of like kill the allicin but I don't think it hurts to really do it anyway so I'm gonna chop this up leave it out and then I'll come back to it and fry it off with our fish.
Okay, so dinner is done. We have our salmon, sweet potato, our purple cauliflower, and I've thrown on some parsley there because I'm having a bit of a parsley moment. We've got heaps in our herb garden and we're gonna eat our dinner. Hey guys, so I am actually just, like I'm bald. I'm actually just in the middle of editing this video and realized that I didn't do a sign off. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did and you wanna see more videos with like health, tips or health hacks in it because there's like a bunch more things that I can think of that I couldn't necessarily fit into the space of this vlog. But if you enjoyed it, let me know in the comments and be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and we will see you in the next one. Hope you're all having a great week, staying safe wherever you're at and we'll talk to you very soon. Okay, bye.